Next, we have Newsday's A.J. Carter. He's going to be speaking with Dennis Haber. He's an attorney. He's going to talk to him about planning for your financial future and your reverse mortgage options. Dennis, reverse mortgages in their current incarnation have been around since 1987. That's 18 years. Why is there still so much confusion? There's so much confusion because it's totally different than a forward mortgage. For example, with a forward mortgage, no monthly payments are, payments are made with a forward mortgage. With a reverse mortgage, no monthly payments are made. With a reverse mortgage, there's no income, asset, or credit qualifications. With a reverse mortgage, there is no personal liability. On the other hand, with a forward mortgage, what we're all used to is all those things exist. And to reverse all that is, is a big challenge for our seniors. Well, I'm starting to hear a lot of advertisements on the radio, television, take a reverse mortgage. Sounds great. What's the downside? The downside, if you will, is that many of our clients would love to leave their homes mortgage-free to their children. With a reverse mortgage, that is not going to happen. On the other hand, we have a big segment of our population of our baby boomers that want the parents to do this because they can't take care of their family and give their parents money at the same time. So getting back to the downside, it's not so much of a downside in the sense that there is generally plenty of equity left when the house is finally sold, but there is a mortgage that has to be paid off at that time. We raised the point, people would like to leave their house to their children, now they may not be able to or not the full amount. At what point do you tell the children? At the beginning. I think from day one, and I encourage all our clients to do that, when they are discussing with me whether to do this and when to start, we always encourage the children to get involved. Sometimes, I will tell you, it is the parents that say to me, I don't want the children to know. But I think, generally, my first step, the first approach, is to have the family on the same page. Now, again, you hear a lot of things. It's wonderful. It's great. It gives you money. Tap the equity in your home. Are there any expenses, or any expenditures you say people should not take out a reverse mortgage for? You know, I can't say, nor can anybody say to a particular client or a prospective client, you shouldn't do this. If somebody wants to travel, how can one say that's not appropriate? Now, most of the clients that I see, for example, are struggling. They have problems meeting their current bills. They are worried and they're concerned that they just can't live the life that they want. With the reverse mortgage, it enables them to change all that. But there's nothing wrong with taking out a reverse mortgage for the around the world cruise. As long as they understand that the ramifications are that the money that's taken out eventually will have to be paid back. So you decided to go and get one. How do you choose a bank? Good question. And I think the way to do that is to understand a couple of things. Number one, that the interest rates on reverse mortgage, the closing costs on reverse mortgages, are basically the same whether you go to bank A, bank B, or bank C, or broker A, B, or C, or mortgage banker A, B, and C. The reason for that is most of the closing costs are set by HUD, the government, federal government. Most of the title charges are set by the state of New York. So consequently, wherever you go, the closing costs are basically the same. The difference, however, is the experience that the company has. That is critical because, as we discussed, so many things are different with the reverse mortgage. You need somebody that has the expertise that can answer all the questions the family has. Well, in terms of the questions, what responsibilities does somebody have once they take out a reverse mortgage? The responsibility basically is to pay the taxes, the property taxes, and the homeowner's insurance. Keep the house in good repair which is the basic responsibility we all have anyway. Nothing changes in that regard. Is there a chance that the, the money will run out, that suddenly you lose the home, you're still alive, you've tapped it to the max? There is that possibility, 
except I tell our clients, look, you have to, this is the last pool of money that's going to be created, and it has to be used with respect. I have had clients really manage their money quite well. On the other hand, I've had a couple who haven't done such a good job.